Okay. Hi everyone. I wonder if I can make the if I can make the the video a bit a bit warmer because the colors are a bit uh, the colors are a bit uh, are not shining a lot. Let me try that. Yeah, not too much, of course. Maybe that, no, and that, no. just like that, maybe. Yeah. of background music. So I'm going to wait a few more seconds and then we're going to start. Just showing the, the link for the for the resources uh, related to this stream, I have updated the document up to last time, basically giving all the resources and inst instructions to to well to follow the steps of uh, the setup for plugins up to now, up to where we are today. If the music is too loud, please let me know. Otherwise, <coughs> otherwise we're good to start. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, welcome everyone. Today is uh, um, about the creation of a plugin for Gephi. We are not starting today. We have started uh, uh, about a month ago, uh, streaming one hour per day, uh, one hour per week. And uh, a couple of times we, I have been a bit over time uh, because of the difficulties uh, that uh, I faced. Um, but to, to summarize what we did so far, uh, in the first step, uh, we simply downloaded the template for a plugin directly from the GitHub repository where such a template is available. Uh, so we used uh, a GitHub client for that. Uh, what else? Uh, we used Maven to compile the plugin for the first time. Um, and that was pretty much it, but that took a bit of time. The replay of this first step is available as a YouTube uh, session that is segmented and edited with chapters so that you can redo um, everything um, at a quicker pace than, uh, than the original. Then uh, in the second step, which was last week uh, actually, um, what did we do? Yeah, we just tried to um, to create the first panel. So a panel is a window. We start. We we tried to create the first panel of the plugin uh, because a plugin in Giphy, uh you know, you need to see it in when you open Giphy, You, if you have the plugin installed. Uh, you should the user should be able to interact with it, and most 
uh, most commonly uh, having a little panel with the plugin in the in the Giphy environment, you know, in the Giphy window, is the is quite natural. So we struggled last week to get the to get this panel uh, created, um, and then we struggled a bit more to have this. Uh, you know anything that we would create in the panel that it would actually be visible when we compile the plugin and launch it in Giphy. You know the first times whatever we were adding to the panel, we couldn't see it in Giphy uh, afterwards. So that was an issue we solved, and that was the end of the stream last week. Uh, maybe. Uh, uh, yes, so for this third step today, we're gonna finally work at uh, having the plugin to do something. What we want is a plugin that shows a, a kind of word cloud. I don't like this term that much, but uh, as a shorthand, I'm gonna say a word cloud. So showing a word cloud that summarizes the textual attributes of, uh, of the nodes that are visible in the overview. Why would we be interested in that? Is because when you explore a, um, a network, and let me take Les Miserables as an example, when we explore a network, uh, oftentimes we are interested in, you know, who are these nodes in this region? Uh, and, and either we zoom on them, and, and then if we are familiar with these nodes, we can immediately say, oh yeah, in this region we have these nodes that I know of. But we might not be super familiar with the network we have in view. And in this case, having a panel that just shows the key and the most frequent terms associated with these nodes helps the analyst uh, immediately see, you know, or understand what these nodes are about. Um, so that's the idea. Um, it's not trivial to do, but uh, you know, we are we are going to do it. So let's get started. Um, I have already opened NetBeans. Uh, you know, that's what we used last time. So NetBeans is this program, this software that helps us write code. Uh, you have many other kinds of software to write code, but that's the most easy when uh, we use, uh, when we develop plugins for Giphy. Uh, so you have three, let me do it again. So you have three icons there. Uh, this one is to create a new file. I honestly never used this one. This one is to create uh, a new project, but we already have you know, the project for plugins created. And this one is to open existing projects. So I'm gonna click on this one. And last time we have worked on this you know, Giphy plugins project. The other one you don't care about. It's uh, a kind of working uh, like a draft that I was using. So I'm just op gonna open this one. And so NetBeans is opening it. Uh, what is super important to realize is that this is the parent project. Giphy plugins, and you can have multiple plugins in it. Where are they? They are in the modules folder. So you can expand this folder to see the plugins you are currently working on. So that's what I'm doing now. And of course, we just have one plugin that we work on, which is the Lexical Explorer plugin. If you double click on this plugin, it will open it as a separate project, and that's what we need. We want to work on the Lexical Explorer plugin. Hi, RMDES. Uh, I don't know you, but I'm super pleased to see you. 
So Lexical Explorer plugin, I'm going to double click on it up and you're going to see it's going to open right below. So RMDES, uh, if you have any question, please ask them in the comments. I never get comments in the streams and I'm super desperate about it. So <laughs> don't hesitate asking any question. I'm not, you know, just chatting uh, in a one way. You can really ask uh, any clarification questions or make suggestions. I mean, you are more than welcome. Oh, yes. Hi, Ricardo. Yes, I've seen, uh, I've seen you from the Giphy Facebook group. Don't, don't hesitate asking questions, right, um, anytime. So I was saying that we have, oh, by the way, is my, yeah. We have this Lexical Explorer plugin, and where is the code, right? You have so many folders. Well, the code is in source. So we click on it, and then you have a folder, and inside this folder, you have the uh, file that creates our window. And that's the file we are, we're using last time. So let's click on it. Let me, you know, that's the window that uh, we created last time. So technically it's called the panel. And you have three tabs on the top. You have source, design, and history. Design is to have uh, you know, uh, it's like a WYSIWYG, so it's like a, a graphical interface that shows you the window or the panel as it's going to look like in, the, in, uh, in Giphy. So that's useful, right? Uh, as you see at the moment, it's completely empty except for this uh, silly uh, text that I have written just to test. So that's the design view. If you go in the source view, you're going to see the code that uh, the code that creates this um, panel. And history, history, we will not use it now, but just for, to let you know, it's super useful. In some rare cases, you make some mistakes or whatever, and you are like, oh, I would love to come back to the version of my file as it was yesterday because, you know, uh, today I've just messed up with the code. I've made some things I can't repair. I would love to come back to, you know, two hours ago or, or yesterday or two weeks ago. Well, you just click on history and very easily you can scroll back in time uh, through the versions of your file. But we have not screwed up yet, so we don't need it. Okay, so we're going to go to source and that's how the file looks like. And again, we have worked on it last time. So if you're curious about all these ugly things, uh, have a look at last time. Uh, so for today, what I mean, you know, we are really at the start of the project. The last, the first two sessions we were struggling with the setup. Today is really the first day we're going to enjoy developing the plugin and do something useful. So I'm a bit not afraid, but I'm like, wow, there are so many things we could do. Uh, so I chose not to over prepare with the roadmap and, you know, a, a 12 steps plan or whatever. I just, uh, I'm going to just jump into it. I would suggest that what we do is uh work on a simple file and we're gonna write the code that um, loops through the nodes of the network and uh, finds the, the uh, an attribute of the node that has some text in it and then it will extract the text from this attribute. I hope it's clear. Uh, let me repeat. What we want to do today is just writing the code that, you know, we'll take the nodes from the graph that is open in Gephi, take the nodes, uh, loop through them, which means that we're gonna just 
goes through each of them, it's gonna, the code is going to grab uh, an attribute of the nodes, and it should have text in it because we want to show text. And, and that's it. Uh, I suppose in one hour we can do more, but uh, let's start with that. So I'm going to go fast. I don't know if I'm going to go fast, but uh, Ricardo, if you have any question, like I'm going, I'm going too fast, please let me know. So we need a network because this network will, uh, I mean, we're going to go through the nodes of the network. I'm going to use let me show that here. Yeah. So, you know, to open a network and to go through the nodes of this network, I could, I'm just going to copy paste, which is the mantra of developers. I'm going to copy paste some code from the Giphy toolkit demos that you see, uh, that you see there. Uh, it's a website created by uh, the developers of, of Giphy to uh, provide some examples of code to use Giphy, but through code. So as you see, let me zoom a bit. As you see, you have plenty of demos, examples of codes to do stuff, uh, to do stuff in, uh, with code. Uh, so you can do filtering, you can generate graphs. Uh, let me show the bottom of it. You can do some uh, partition. Partition is when you just, uh, anyway, you can do many things. And what we need is, I don't know, uh, we're going to do some very simple stuff like, yeah, import, export. Do you see it? No, it's right above. Import, export, that's exactly what we want. We want to import a network to play with it. So I'm clicking there and you know, I'm going to just crawl the file until I find the, yes, exactly. So this is the code that is provided by the developers of Giphy to, uh, to import uh, some, uh, some, you know, some network. So I'm going to use all of this code. And that's it. You know, so I'm just copying every no every code line of code that we need up to the point where you know I don't I will I don't need to export the graph uh, uh, because I, I just want to import it. So okay, I select all these lines, but the question is where am I going to put it in my project? Right? As I told you the uh, this file is ready to show the, the window. Oh, Ricardo, sorry, you have a question. So, uh, okay, Ricardo, uh, pop, pop, pop. Uh, Yes, you're totally right. I want to pass the text content from the column. You know, you have uh, for each, if you, in Giphy, you can go to the data laboratory where you see all the nodes as a table and each column is an attribute, right? So I would need to find a column, an attribute that has text in it and then as you, as you say, I want to pass the text content from this column and I don't want to extrapolate words based on some value. I just want to count the most frequent terms in this column. You know, it's, it's, uh, I have modest uh, objectives. Um, in practice, if you want to do it well, uh, th there is some work, uh, as you will see. But uh, I hope you understand that uh, it's super simple. And then I agree with you, the, the result should be a, a, the result should be a kind of word cloud tag. I'm going to start super simple. It's going to be just a list, 
it's not going to be like a word cloud in, in 2D, right? It's going to be just an ordered list of the most, from the most frequent term to the least frequent. We could be fancy later, but as a first uh, version, we're going to just do that, right? Again, if you have a very simple network, you're going to be like, eh, I could do that myself. Just, you know, it's like, I just need to look at the network. But if you have a bigger network with hundreds and thousands of nodes, this plugin is going to be useful. So I was, and thanks for the question, uh, Ricardo, and, you know, continue asking. My pleasure to answer. So I was saying that we don't, we probably don't want to put the code we're going to paste from GitHub. Uh, we, we exactly, we, we want to, to paste this code in a different place. We don't want to mess it up with the, you know, the code that creates a window. So I, we're going to create a dedicated file for it. Oops, 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 oops. Sorry, it's here. Uh, a dedicated file, yeah. So to create a file, you just position the mouse on the folder where the file should be inserted, and you right click, new, Java class. You know, it's like uh, pretty obvious, I would say. And then it asks you, uh, well, what name? So that's a good question. What name? Um, well, you know, we're going to refactor, we're going to rework all of that later, but we could be super simple at, at the beginning, like, uh, so we want just to import the file, right? So it's going to be uh, network importer. That's it. So finish. And it just creates a file with this name, right? .java, of course. OK, it has created this simple file. Let me zoom there. So you can't just paste in Java. You can't just paste the code there. It has The code has to be within a method. Maybe you call, you call them functions in JavaScript, I suppose. Uh, we call them method in Java, methods. And the method, often you can choose whether it's private, public, whatever. So we're going to make it public. It's, it means all the other parts of the code can access it. Public, a method returns something. In this case, we don't know yet what it's going to return. So I'm just going to say void, nothing. Uh, it returns nothing. And then we have a name always for the method. And we're going to call it uh, <laughs> uh, well, import from file, right? Uh, because at the we are working at the moment, and we have we're gonna just open a GEXF file, you know, a network file from my computer. Of course, we're gonna change that because when the plugin is gonna be released, the user they will work with the file which is currently open in Giphy, not some file they're gonna open. But you know, we are working. Uh, so then you open and close the parentheses because this is where you would put some parameters, but we don't need parameters at the moment. And then you open a curly brace, you close the curly brace. So, you know, I just typed enter and NetBeans closed the curly brace for me. And the code is, then you can write code there in between, in the body, I think it's called the body of the method. So paste, you know, control V, up. <laughs> that's not, that's some uh, previous uh, things from my uh, preparing the, the stream. So no, no, let's go back to, so we're going to copy that, you know, what I have highlighted. I hope it's, well, copy, then back in back in NetBeans, and I literally control V pasting. Yeah, great. So, and that's where NetBeans is going to help us. And I, that's why I'm super happy to work with NetBeans and any other uh, um, software to code. As you see, it complains in the margins. It shows plenty of all these things in red are like, you know, there is an issue, there is an issue. 
The big issue is that they don't know, you know, your program doesn't know what a project controller is. Uh, because it's something specific to Giphy, it's not any Java program that has this concept or this object, as we should say. So give, uh, NetBeans helps, is going to help us solve this issue. We're going to just click on the issue, and actually it suggests us you know, to just add the import line that corresponds to, to the things that it highlighted in red. So very quickly, I'm going to just say, yes, add. And so project controller, it doesn't understand what it is. Workspace, it, ooh, workspace, I'm not sure. No, no, workspace, it tells you that, you know, it's, you could import it from here, but I think that's a workspace is actually a Gephi thing, not a, an open ID thing. So I should not import it from there. And then import controller, same, it doesn't know where it is. File, uh, file it Java, yeah. Container, same, it will, it's a Java thing. You know, it tells you, well, you could import it like that, but it's a container from a different types of projects, not Giphy, so. This is where a lot of beginners could uh, really make a mistake, but like, no, 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 don't, don't import container this way. It's, we need, uh, we need the container provided by Java, not this other fancy container and same, it doesn't know all of that. So you import things that, oh, an IO exception, you know, that's a very classic Java thing. Yeah, you can import that. For the rest, these things are just, uh, concepts from Giphy and we don't have the Giphy library that uh, contains these concepts. So what should we do? We should add the Giphy libraries to our project and then we will be able to import these concepts from these libraries. How do you do that? Let me show you. You have, so as I told you, all the code is in this source packages uh, folder. You have another super important folder, which is the project files. Settings, you really don't care. It's really pom, the pom file, pom.xml. This thing is, you know, that's the settings file for your project. Uh, and this is where you list, you have the list of the dependencies for your project. So we click on it. Oops, you don't see much. And you see, we see a lot of NetBeans dependencies, but we don't see Gephi dependencies. The good news is that we don't have to manually write, you know, the dependencies of Gephi there. Is, uh, NetBeans is gonna find them for us. So back to our file, the source file that is plenty, that has plenty of errors. And we click again on the, you know, on the alert bulb, light bulb, and actually da -da 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 -da, search dependency is going to search for it for now, uh, for us. Found it and it's going to download it for us. Uh, the, uh, download it and add it to the pump file. So, you know, nothing to touch there. Uh, the only issue we have is that, yeah, uh, I, I'm just, you know, you have to be careful about the version, which version of this uh, library should you import. So it, it tells us 0 0.9.7, and I think we are working with 0 0.9.3. Uh, we'll figure that later. So just add. We wait, you know, Net NetBeans has to scan uh, the file. It has to download it. It doesn't down download it Im immediately, I think. Maybe it does, I don't know. Then when you click again, oh, it has not found it. Uh, okay, we'll see that later. We, I'm gonna just import it 
I'm going to just you know, do the same for the other missing things, such dependency. So, well, that was the same, you know, project API from Giphy. Let's see if it has found it. Sometimes you have to wait a few seconds uh, so that NetBeans just scans and you see the light bulbs refreshing. No, still not. So in this case, I wonder if, I wonder, I just, I'm not exactly sure. Let's see if it has added the dependency in the pump file. That's the first thing to do. No, I don't see, I don't see them there. But maybe, you know, uh, you have two pump files. The one I'm just showing you, which is the pump file for the plugin. But if you remember the beginning of this stream, you know, the, the plugin is one of the plugins of the parent project. And the parent project has a pump file too. This pump file kind of su is superseding the one from the child project, which is this one, our plugin. So if I didn't find the dependency there, you know, I should check the one from the parent, which I'm doing now. And it has, no, there are no, I'm looking at the dependency section of the parent file. And there is no dependency, so I mean, yes, there is just one, but that's not the one. That's not the one that uh, we were after. So okay, no, no big deal. We're gonna go back to our the to our file. Maybe that NetBeans has scanned the file since we left. Still not. So maybe I'm gonna click on Java dependencies there, and I'm going to right click on it. Oh, no, not Java dependencies, dependencies there. Right click on it, and then download declare dependencies. But that's not going to work because that's not going to work because the dependency for project controller that you see there has not been declared in the pump file, right? The last time I checked. The dependency, you don't see like a Giphy, whatever. Never mind, never mind. But I'm a bit surprised. Usually it's really right out of the box. So I'm just going to do it again. If I do that, I'm a bit afraid it's going to add the I prefer not to do that. So if I click on add again, basically redoing what I've done before. And if I back in the file, in the pump file, I don't see it. Okay, so what happens in this case? Well, you just add them manually. I, you know, usually you don't need to. So I'm going to go back to, you know, where I copy pasted the file. I'm going to go to the, to the, I'm going to go to the root, you know, like the parent folder. And there's a pom file. And that's where I'm going to copy paste the, where is that? Hmm. Oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. I see what it does. So it's not there. I mean, it, it, let me exp explain what, why I was not super happy. Is that it, yeah, you have a, de a dependency, but it's this one. But it, it makes you, uh, you know, it brings all the Giphy toolkit as a dependency. And I would, and that would be fine, right? But I really prefer to, import each module, each part we need, not the whole toolkit. Otherwise, you're, uh, 
the plugin is going to be bigger than necessary. So we're going to just go to the toolkit. We're going to try and find this dependency. So Giphy toolkit. So I'm back in on GitHub. Found it there. Palm file and then dependencies, plenty of dependencies there. Well, give you uh, net beans and beans, but we have found it. You see, project API, so it's always the same. Group ID is kind of you know. The, the author or the owners of the code, the artifact ID is the name of the library, and then you have a version. So I'm going to copy that. As you see, I hate writing code, right? I just copy stuff. So, Ricardo, can't you get it all and then remove the unused part of the toolkit? Uh, very good question. Um, Uh, uh, well, so everything is possible, right? I suppose there is a way to do what you just uh, suggest. In practice, in practice, how do you exclude or remove things that, you know, I know what I need from the toolkit, but I don't have now we're a list of the things that are in the toolkit and that I don't need. Uh, I would have to search for this list or I would need to guess. You know, I don't want to do that. It's so much easier to just be super mechanical. You need this library, you import this library, you know, this little part. Uh, and that's it. So I agree that when you see me struggling, finding the thing, you're like, well, just take the whole toolkit and you're going to try and remove things later. but. I, that would be super hard. So I prefer to struggle now a bit. And you see, I, I think I found the solution. And, and later I'm going to have a super, yes, exactly. Minimalist is super important. Uh, first, because you want to have a, a good experience to the user, not a, a big fat plugin. And second, because everything that will be imported, if we would take everything, well, you never know how it can mess up things later. Staying lean is always a safer option. So I copy the thing I just highlighted. I go back to my code, to the pump file. Let me show to the, you know, to the pump file of the plugin. Yes, maybe I could put it in the pump file of the parent. And that would be useful later. Well, I don't care. You know, if I were to develop other plugins, but let's do just in the child, in the palm of the child, so our plugin. And then I just, you know, paste it there. So Giphy version, does it know what the version, what's the Giphy version is? So Giphy version, it would pick it up, you know, because that's just the name of a property, which is called Giphy version. But where is this property located? In the parent pom, maybe. So let's go in the parent pom. Do we have a Giphy version property at the top? Yes, you see it there. So if you have this, let me, if you have this property in the parent pom, so you know that's Giphy dot version. Well, in this case, you can reuse this property in the child pom, and I'm going to do that here. You know, in the child pom, it knows what the Giphy version is because it has been defined in the 
prank pawn. But still it complains. Why is it complaining? So what I'm gonna do often, you don't, you're gonna, there is a shortcut in NetBeans. Let me uh, say it now. So at least in uh, on Windows and on Mac, you would have the equivalent. I type simultaneously Alt Shift F, you know, weird stuff, but I am completely used to it. Alt Shift Shift F while you are on a file. Oops. And if you click Alt Shift F, it just uh, indents the file exactly as it should. So you see what it did, like dependency was, that thing was a bit too much on the left, on the right, sorry. Oops, 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 oops. Oh, what did I do? And clicking on Alt Shift F, it just indents your file uh, in a neat way. Yeah, I don't know, uh, I don't know, Ricardo. Uh, it's weird because it says that what does it say, by the way? It says overrides version defined in dependency management. So let's go in dependency management, which is in the parent form. Dependent, where is the dependency management stuff? Maybe at the bottom, plugin management. Do you see? No, you don't see much. Weird, where is dependency management? Ah, but there, I'm really stupid. I think it's this one. I suppose, right? Yes, I suppose it's exactly that. I suppose, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, because you can be s super strong ninja in uh, pom, uh, in you know in in uh, pom files. I wonder if this thing is not what I suppose it does. So what I'm saying is that the version has been defined. I suppose that's that's the reason. So in the parent pom, it has defined a version, as you see here, for all dependencies from this group project. And what is project group ID? If we scroll up, uh, well, it's actually, that's simply this one, right? And that's exactly the one we use in our pom file of the child there. So back in the pump file, we're nearly there. I'm sorry, it's super boring, but at least we don't do things just by magic. So I can remove this version, this version here, because the version has already been specified in the parent pump. And actually, I can do the same for all the NetBeans dependencies. I, I remind you that the NetBeans dependencies are useful to create to create the graphical interface of the plugin because Giphy is based on NetBeans for the graphical interface and a bit more than that. But so this that's why it keeps complaining. It's because I think this version here is not necessary. Why is it complaining again? Oops! 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 No! 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 Why does it complain? Override definition. Yes, exactly. So I'm just removing all the versions because they have been defined in the pom file. It should stop complaining because I, I just do what it asks. Overrides version defined. I think we're fine, honestly. Anyway, back to our code, because that's the point, right? I have added the project, whatever 
the let, no, let's be a bit more clear on that. I've, I've just added in the poem this dependency project API. So we should be able in our code, and I'm going back to the code now, to import the project controller. Uh, so click there. Yeah, bingo. Do you see it? Yeah. So workspace, I suppose, was in the same dependency, so we should be fine. Superb. Uh, oh, you see, you have two workspaces and should really choose the Giphy one, not this one here. And uh, so import is, is in a different, yeah, it's an, in a different uh, dependency. But now that we have completely found the way to do it, I'm just gonna do things super quickly. Import, where is the import stuff? EO importer API. Oh, so you have the API and uh, I suppose it's the API. This one here, right? Do you see it? No, you don't see it. This one here. So copy back to Giphy to the POM file. Past, paste. I remove the, the version because it's defined in the parent POM. Click on Shift Alt F to fix the proper indentation. So I've added that. Let's see if we can. I leave a bit, of, a couple of seconds for NetBeans to scan this new dependency. I go back to the code. Can I now import? Can I now import the thing? Yeah, brilliant. Okay. Container, container. I suppose it's in the project file, so we should be fine. Don't pick this one, it's from another project. It's this one below. Super. Oh, edge direction default. I don't know if it's gonna be. Oh yes, it's also in the importer, super. What we have, default processor, that should be. Oh, we don't have it. I'm gonna search the dependency. Let me zoom there. You know, search dependency. It's in the, well, it's in the importer plugin. Why is it not? Okay, never mind. It's in the IO processor plugin. So I'm gonna look for it there, you know, in the, IO processor plugin. Oh, plugin. Uh, I think I found it. I'm just checking. Yeah, so that was the one at the bottom, which is. Which is where? Which is this one here? So copy back in the pump file, paste it's right there. Save a couple of seconds for NetBeans to. Oh, I'm gonna remove the version. Couple of seconds for for NetBeans to uh, find it back in my file and I hope that if I do, yes, import. Export controller, maybe a, in a different, yes, in a different. So export, export, export. Ah, but I, I don't care about export. Why? Oh, no, I don't, I don't want to export anything. Export full graph, I don't want to export anything, so I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm, just re I'm removing this piece of code. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so we're gonna see maybe uh, another time uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the meaning of all of these pieces. I mean, another time quite quick, but all right, 10 to four, I've done nothing, awful. Uh, so, you know, this line of code is to 
import a file and as we want to import a file we're gonna just we're gonna just uh, well we're gonna just tell it where the file is so I need I need a file with with some text and the miserable has no text as far as I remember I mean it has the name of the characters but it has no uh, no textual attribute so let me I think I had created well, it's really rubbish because my textual attribute is just male or female which is two words but you know <laughs> just to start it should be enough so let me find it yeah found it so I'm gonna put a file at the root of this project you know the root means the the folder basically so let me show you so okay you see it here no so that's my you know the the, the folder with my files so i should delete this one we don't use it anymore we are our code is there so i click on it you have you know modules and in it we have our uh, plugin so i'm going to click on it and i'm just going to you know the pump file that we worked on and the source folder that we have the code inside well i'm just going to paste there a uh, the miserable file miserable extended whatever dot gxf so i'm going to copy the name of the file i'm going to be back in netbeans and I'm gonna do file, uh, you know, like example file, example. Oops, why am I? Oh, I'm English keyboard. Example, example gxf. Uh, I don't know how you declare file anymore. Oh, now I remember, I think. Well, I'm gonna do thing a thing that is not maybe super obvious, but path. Uh, so I'm gonna use path, which is a convenient uh, method from Java NIO package, path of and I'm gonna write the name of the file there and then dot and I'm gonna convert it to a file to file and I have created so this creates a file from the name of a file and if you you know I just give I, I've just given the name no, not uh, nothing else not the folder or whatever uh, because the file is situated at the root of my project so it, it doesn't need to know where it is by default it is at, at the it's at the default place and example gxf i copy the name of this thing and i put it uh, there i suppose i just delete all of that because that's my file So it's not happy. Oh yeah, because I'm stupid. That's my file. I've already defined my file. So I can just remove this line because my file is already defined. And import file. This is where I put the name of my file. Up. Oh. So it's not directed. And directed. Okay. So now, and maybe we can conclude on that super important how do we test this uh, code we could compile a plugin and uh, and run it on Giphy and see if there is any error but that takes pretty much a lot of that takes a lot of time 
So instead, I would suggest that we, just for the sake of testing our code, we don't launch the plugin. We're going to just launch this file. So to make a file able to execute, you have to add the infamous, you know, because it's a pretty long stuff that everybody hates. We have to add it a uh, we have to add a main method to it. Why? Because a main method is recognized by a Java program as something you can execute. So c'est parti. Public uh, static void main. You have to really type all of that, and that's why a lot of people hate Java just because of that. But you know, so that's it. That's a specific type of method that, again, uh, makes it executable. And then inside, we'd say, well, just launch our method, which is the one below. You know, do that. Uh, and of course, uh, it's not exactly that. It's more like. Something more like that. Yeah. So that's a bit super weird, but uh, at least it works. So what this method says, you know, this public static vote main whatever horrible thing is just to s is is going to be executed when we launch the file. And what does it do? It creates this. It instantiates. That's the proper term. It instantiates this file where the method is belongs to that so that's what makes things a bit weird but basically instantiates this class you know this file where we are and launch one and launch this method and so it will execute all of that so control s saving the file and what you see here in NetBeans is that a little green arrow ha has been added to this file because NetBeans has recognized that it's an executable file because we have added that method. So now with NetBeans, I can sim simply right click on it and click on run file and it will run this file. And why am I doing that? To avoid the pain of recompiling all of, all of a plugin and then launching it in in, in Giphy, that's super heavy. We just want to test this, you know, these 10 lines of code we have written. So run. Well, uh, yeah, let's see if there is any mistake. So run file, and I would like to show you the, where is the, the output? Oh, it's on my other screen. Let me show you the output here. So that's the output. Uh, there's going to be nothing really. Yes, <laughs> I just wanted to make sure there was no mistake. And of course, there is a mistake. So let's see what's. But at least you see, we can really check the mistake super quickly. Ooh. Uh, I'm reading the content of the file to a string avoid all this weird stuff and they are not related to
just trying to turn this file into a string. Ooh. Okay, that's it. And we still get an error with that. Oh yeah, to the I moved it to the to the resources there.
Finally. Okay, so to recap what I did. Uh, so basically, uh, let me let me recap. I, I create a path, which is an object in Java, turning, you know, the address of a file, so to speak, you know, the kind of, the list of folders, etc., where the file is located, and in this case, it's a GXF network file. So I turn this, you know, the location on my drive, uh, I turn it into an object, which is called a path, and thanks to this, I can then read the content of this file into a string which is an object that represents text uh, in coding. So let me re rename it as gxf file as string. We don't need that. Then, so in this string I have the content of the gxf file. Then I initialize a Giphy project. I create an object that specializes in importing networks. I create an object which specializes in importing GEXF networks, especially. And then only I create a container that uh, from the importation of my uh, file as a text, uh, as a string. And to be, so now it's, alm I'm almost there. What needs to be done uh, next to, I'm just copying that here. And we had a lot of issues because I tried before to import the file directly, but within, without turning it into a string first, but within a, a plugin, uh, it's super hard. I think it's impossible for the plugin to uh, load a file outside of the application, outside of the software, outside of Giphy and the plugin. Uh, maybe because of security issues. Uh, so I, try, I, I tried for an hour <laughs> or more to do that, but it's, uh, it doesn't work in the context of a plugin. Uh, so you shouldn't, you should, as I, as I did there, I, you should just uh, turn it into in a string before you, uh, before you import it. and then you can have your graph. A graph controller, what is a graph controller? Let me check again there, graph controller. And we're there. And then we can just, just to be sure we have actually imported the graph, we can do some, you know, some checks on the, we can print some information like, oops. So we have plenty of information on the network, but like edge count. So we can print it number of edges and number of nodes.
Why does it complain? Not exactly sure. Never mind. And then if we launch. If we launch the file again, you see what we got. Number of a well, it was actually already uh, done by default. You know. Uh, displaying the information about the nodes loaded and edge loaded, but you can, as I did, you can also get the information by yourself. So the miserable network has 248 nodes, at least in the version I have uploaded, and so 248 edges and 74 nodes. So now, just now, can we, and that's for next week, uh, we can uh, you know, play with the nodes. But as, as you've seen, the, the, str so the struggle I had is that I tried through many, many different ways to open a file directly, and I got these weird errors. I suppose it's because I tried to, to import it in the plugin, which uh, well, is an issue. Uh, and so I bypassed the thing by, as you see, turning the file. Do you see it here? No. Before trying to, so let me, before trying to, where is that? Yeah. Before trying to import the file directly, you know, the file that, that is there. I mean, trying to do that, I, I got, errors and errors and errors and that was really awful so in the end what i tried is to make it where it was this there i tried to make it import not the file because it, it can't do it but import uh, a, a network which is in a string and there is uh, as you see it worked so how I just needed to turn the file into a string. So basically that's what this line does. You know, files, and especially that, files read string from the file and with this character encoding. <coughs> so this line turns this file into the, you know, the string that of the text inside the file. And that can be imported there. Uh, without trouble and then we are back into familiar territory where uh, basically the once the f the file or, or the text version of the file has been imported uh, you get access to all information on it you know the nodes the attributes the ages uh, the colors of the nodes and everything through this graph model object. And I just stopped with some very simple uh, uh, properties, like give me the number of edges. So you do, you do graph model, get the graph, get edge count, and it gives it to you. And then number of o nodes, and I did the same, but for nodes. And next week we're gonna be, doing some uh, a bit more fancy things uh, for that so i'm i'm talking but i'm sure everybody uh, left because it was so uh, <laughs> so painful basically uh, but yeah uh, another victory painful victory uh, and see you next week i'm gonna hang around for one or two minutes and and i'm gonna disconnect cheers
Oh, before I leave, I'm going to push the I'm going to push the modifications we made to uh, GitHub, which is always a good thing to do. Oh, I'm in the modules. Uh, why am I in the modules? mistake. Yeah, of course I forgot that. The M argument. And I can push all of that. Ricardo, did you? I can't. I maybe I just see your method now. Your, your, uh, maybe I see your comment now. I don't know if it was posted before. Uh, and you might be right. You might be right. Uh, you might be right. Uh, well, we. We could, we uh, could. I mean, in order to 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 be sure, I could just, you know, uh, import e uh, everything, the Giphy toolkit as a whole, and and see if if I run into the same error. Uh, but I, as you as you see, I was stubborn and I was really uh, staying with my approach. So I'm. It's really a matter of of uh, of approach and preference. Uh, the reason why, so we'll see later if I run again into these problems, I expect not to be the case. Um, but another reason why I did not, in, I, I did, 
I mean, the reason why every the struggle I had today was really kind of uh, peripheral in the sense that it doesn't really uh, impact the, the, the next steps is that everything I did was to try and open a file, you know, a GXF file. But when you think of it, the plugin will never be in this situation. The plugin will, will always uh, will always uh, use the, the file which is open in, in Giphy. So I was struggling there just for the uh, just for the sake of helping me or any uh, plugin developer uh, to uh, you know to be able to work with the file which is locally on my on my computer. Uh, because it's going to be helpful uh, in the development stage. And I wanted to be able to solve, uh, or I wanted to be able to do that uh, without uh, compromising on the, on the, how do you say that, on the, uh, on the quality of the dependencies. Uh, because if for development reasons you start uh, uh, basically uh, adding inflated dependencies just because it makes development easier uh, uh, then you know it's gonna be uh, uh, it's you know I, I really try to stay in the production mode when the plugin is gonna be released uh, we, we need to stay in the configuration that will be the one of the release. But I must admit it's completely a, a kind of a very uh, hard choice. And as you see, I suffered from, from it. Uh, I just hope uh, it's not going to be the same uh, next week because I, 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 I still think that uh, uh, it can be a super enjoyable experience. Uh, but so far we had none of this uh, enjoyment. So. Uh, uh, let's hope we're going to have it next week. <sighs> okay, closing there and closing the stream as well. So thanks for following and I don't know if I'm, if I'm going to do a replay because when, you know, there is not much that is interesting in this uh, in this session, except maybe for the for the last uh, ten minutes when I finally uh, get it. Thank you for following, and see you next week maybe. 